Now, of course, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Everybody knows that. We're about to celebrate tomorrow. And you know, I just wanted to bring up something real quick about, about holidays in general. There seems to be a lot of people these days, with, especially with the inter on the internet, you get a lot of weird doctrines out there, and a lot of people have a, a problem with celebrating holidays, almost like the Jehovah's Witnesses, even though they're not the, you know, they're, they're people who claim to believe in Christ, and they want to go and just stick with the Bible, and um, they'll tell you that it's wrong to celebrate Christmas, it's wrong to celebrate Easter, and for all I know, they're going to tell you it's wrong to celebrate Thanksgiving. Now look, I don't think it's wrong to celebrate any of those holidays. I think they're all good. I think they're all righteous. Now, of course, I don't believe in Santa Claus and celebrating Santa Claus. We don't believe in the Easter Bunny and celebrating the Easter Bunny. We celebrate the birth of Christ. We celebrate the resurrection from the dead. And tomorrow, you could say, well, tomorrow is more of a secular holiday. You know, it doesn't have to be. Tomorrow, a day of Thanksgiving is very, very, very biblical. And I'm going to go through that tonight. We're going to see how often Thanksgiving is found in the Bible. And... Just in general for celebrating holidays, I think we could, we could glean something. And I know in context of Leviticus 22, where we started reading, it goes over these different sacrifices and how they ought to be doing it and making sure that they're perfect and holy and that they don't have blemishes and all these different various rules. Now, he gets to the point where he talks about offering a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord. So this is similar to the free will offering. It, it, is, it is a free will offering. It's something that was not a requirement. It's not something that you, you must do, like the sin offering and, and you know, the Passover offering and these other offerings that were given. The sacrifice of thanksgiving, look at verse number 29. He says, And when you will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto the Lord, offer it at your own will. It means when you want to, when you want to give thanks unto God, that's when you give your offering of thanksgiving unto the Lord. And it's a good thing. Now, he tells you, you know, there's still rules for that type of offering in order to be acceptable unto God. He says, in that day it shall be eaten up. You shall leave none of it until the morrow. I am the Lord. So tomorrow, you know, try not to have any leftovers, right? If we're going to eat our thanksgiving unto the Lord, our sacrifice, we're going to, um, you know, I'm being a little facetious with that, not, not leaving any of it until the Lord. This, is, this was, of course, talking about the, the sacrifices that they would give and the Levites would eat and they would eat. And, um, but it's important to notice here, it says, he says, hey, look, offer it at your own free will. We ought to be willingly thankful unto the Lord for everything that we have. We, we ought to not be, you know, giving thanks because we feel like we have to, like it's a necessity, but it's something that comes out of our own heart. Now, um, turn, if you would, to Psalm 116, because God is actually interesting. You know, you could say, oh, you know, this Thanksgiving has nothing to do with God. Has nothing to do. It absolutely does. It has a lot to do with God, and I think if it doesn't, if it hasn't for you and your family, it ought to. If it hasn't been, maybe, maybe growing up as a kid, you never thought of God or never mentioned God at Thanksgiving. It was just a time to get together with family and maybe in school. I know in school we drew pictures of turkeys and like had pilgrims and Indians and all kinds of things going on with that. But look, we ought to be focused more on the Lord and what He's given to us in that type of thanksgiving. And of course, it's a great time for family. Hey, praise God for our family. I love my family. And we ought to give thanks for all the blessings He's done. It's a good time to just reflect in general on all of the good things that God has done in your life and all of the things to be thankful for. God is interested in your, He calls it a sacrifice of thanksgiving. Now, obviously, in Leviticus, it's talking about a legitimate, a literal thing, uh, offering, a sacrifice, right? A sacrifice of like an animal that you're putting up on the altar to give as, as um, a sacrifice of thanksgiving. In Psalm 107, verse 22, the Bible reads, And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and declare his works with rejoicing. So part of, of giving the sacrifice of thanksgiving, we need to be declaring God's works with rejoicing. It should be happy. Hey, we should be, it's a time of, of joy and rejoicing and thankfulness over all that God has given us. Psalm 116, verse number 16, the Bible says, O Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bonds. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving and will call upon the name of the Lord. 
And I don't believe he's referring to the literal sacrifice here. I think he's talking about the sacrifice of thanksgiving, of just being thankful unto God. Now, taking one day aside to be thankful and to reflect on everything that you have is great. And I think it's a good thing to do. And I, and, and I love thanksgiving. I think it's great for everybody to be able to look back and reflect. But honestly, we really should be thankful every day. We should be going through this process regularly. Having a set day, hey, that's good because that's a time where you know, hey, this is set apart to just be thankful to, to spend time with our family. But we ought to be able to be thankful in everything that we do. Turn, if you would, to Philippians chapter number 4. If you recall from our memory verse, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 was our memory verse, our memory passage. Verse 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Now I know it's easy to give thanks when things are going well. When your finances are settled pretty, pretty comfortably, when you're living in a nice house, when you've got the power on and your heat's going or your air conditioning's going and you're, you're able to stay comfortable and you've got food in the refrigerator, food in the freezer, food in the pantry, and you're stocked up and your job's going well and you're getting bonuses and you're getting raises and everything seems to be going really well. Hey, it's a lot easy. It's really easy to be thankful during those times. And you know, <coughs> you ought to be thankful during those times. And we need to catch ourselves, if you are in that situation, especially, especially if you're in that situation, to catch yourself complaining or murmuring or being bitter or just focusing on the things that you don't have when you already have so much from God. Shame on you if you get to that point where you're just bitter about things that you don't have and you're focused on those things instead of being thankful unto the Lord for what you do have. But that's the easy time, is when things are going well. The Bible says, in everything give thanks. You know what that means? That means in times when things aren't going so well. That means when you are struggling. That means when, when you do have other problems going on and other issues and persecutions and health problems and your power is getting shut off or anything else is going wrong in your life. Hey, look, we need to be able to give thanks the perfect example of this is Job in, in the Bible. You think about Job was blessed tremendously. Job had 10 children. Job had financial wealth. He had all of these animals and herds and flocks and servants. And God had built a hedge around him and protected him. And his health was great. And his children was great. And his life was great. But what did he do? Even when things were going good, he was offering his sacrifices unto God. He was thankful unto God. He was, he was even offering sacrifices for his children just in case, just to make sure that they were going to be right with God and that God would be pleased with them. And when everything was taken away and he lost his wealth and he lost his family, he lost his children, even when his wife turned on him, he lost everything. He lost his health. He said, the Lord giveth and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He still praised God. He still found it in his heart to give thanks unto God and to know that God is righteous and he praised the name of the Lord. We need to make sure, you know, that's what it means to be in everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. It's God's will for you. That you give thanks for the things in your life. Now look, I know it's not always easy to do because we go through difficult times. You're in Philippians chapter 4. Look at verse number 6. Philippians chapter 4. Excellent chapter about this. Philippians chapter 4. Some real famous verses here. Look at verse number 6. The Bible says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving... Let your requests be made known unto God. So in, those, in the times when you have trouble, in the times when you have need, he's saying, look, in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. Hey, when you have those times of trouble, as I mentioned on Sunday, we're going to God in prayer, right? We want God to hear our prayers and hear our requests. Hey, go to Him in thanksgiving. And be thankful for what He's given you. Hey, you may need to ask a request for something else. You have a need in your life. But be thankful for what He's given you already. Don't come to Him like the spoiled brat. 
that's just going to complain about the things that are going bad in your life and go to God and demand more things of Him. I'll tell you what, that's just a piece of wisdom. If you have someone in your life, maybe you're a child, maybe your wife, and you need to go to someone that, that has the ability to maybe answer a request that you have, you're going to get a lot further with that person if you're thankful for what you already have. And you could recognize what you already have been given and all of the goodness in your life than if you go to that person just like a small baby, like, we don't have anything. We don't have any food. We don't have this. We don't have that. And you start complaining about things. Kids, it's important for you to listen to this. You need to be able to recognize all the good things that your parents do for you. And when there is something that you want or there is something that you think you need, and you want to ask mom or dad for them, it's okay, it's a good thing to ask your parents for things. But don't just go demanding stuff and not being thankful for what you already have. Let's keep reading here. Verse 7 says, And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Let's jump down to verse number 11. The Bible reads, Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. He's saying, look, I know how to be content. Sometimes I have a little, sometimes I have a lot. Either way, I'm going to be content with what I have. Now, of course, tomorrow is Thanksgiving. Turn, if you would, to James chapter 1. Tomorrow is Thanksgiving. It's a day to be thankful. And I think, especially in our culture, in our society, we need to have more humility. We need to be humble. And part of being thankful is being humble. And I think a lot of people these days don't even understand what it means to be thankful for stuff. Here's a good example. Say someone invites you over to dinner. They open up their doors. They prepare a nice meal. They invite you into their house. You come in, sit down. They serve you. They put food in front of your face. And you go, stick up your nose. Oh, we don't eat that. That is unthankful. That is ungrateful. And that is just downright rude. And again, here's another, there's another point that kids, I think, can, can learn from. When it comes to eating food, you ought to be thankful for what your mom and dad put in front of your face and not complain about it. Nobody likes to hear somebody complain about the nice things you do for them. When someone takes the time out of their day and out of their life to prepare something for you and they spend their money and go out and buy stuff and they make something for you, hey, I don't care if it's not your favorite thing in the world, but you better recognize what they're doing for you. This goes for children and adults. You know, we live in a world where people just come to expect certain things. People come to this church and expect to have all these handouts. People come to me and just expect to have all of my time and everything just given to them. And look, we ought to just have that approach. And look, I will give as much as I possibly can. But you need to be thankful for the things that you receive and don't come just demanding and expecting we need to have a humble attitude and a humble heart where we are very thankful and we praise God for every good thing that's given to you. And if you don't receive the world, if I'm not supplying you with a full turkey Thanksgiving dinner tomorrow and, and doing everything else for you, you know, that's not something that you need to, um, that you should be bitter about or unthankful or ungrateful about because there's probably a lot of other things that you may have received that you do need to be thankful for. And I'll be honest with you, look, you're not entitled, nobody's entitled to have a full turkey dinner tomorrow for Thanksgiving. But a lot of people have come to expect it. Being humble means 
understanding your own sin and understanding where you stand in God's eyes and that ultimately, what do you really deserve? What is owed to you? Who owes anything to you? God has given you the free gift of salvation. Praise the Lord for that. He has promised that, that if you live righteously, you will be fed and you will be clothed, but He didn't promise you a gourmet meal. If you've got a roof over your house, over your head, you've got, you've got clothing to wear, and you're not starving, you have nothing to expect from anybody. And when you start expecting things, that's when you're unthankful. That's when you're showing that you are not thankful for the things that you have. There's so many, we live in this entitlement society where people think that the world owes them everything. The same people that are going down and getting their welfare and living off of the government are the same people that are walking around with their cell phones and their cable TV at home and their big screen TVs and their SUVs in the driveway, yet they're going down and getting food stamps. It's ridiculous. If you have problem paying your bills, look, get rid of the television. I know you're addicted to it, but get the thing out of there. It's only going to do you good anyways to turn that thing off and throw it away. I'm sick of hearing about people claiming to be in need. You know, we get phone calls all the time for the church of people who are looking for money. And if you were to go to their house and you see they're smoking cigarettes, they're drinking booze, they're spending money on all these other things, yet they want to come and get your hard-earned money. Now look, I'm not a greedy person. I like to give. But I'm not going to give to somebody who's fully capable of working and doing their own thing and that just wants to live in sin. And, and because they spend money on all of these other things that are not important, now all of a sudden they don't have food, you're going to come to me and expect to get food? I'm going to come to you and say, why don't you chuck those cigarettes and that booze and the TV and your cell phone? Then maybe you could come up with the money to buy us your own food. People become too... Why am I preaching all this? Because people come to rely on all those things and just think that they deserve it all. That because we live in the United States, that it's just a right that you have. Well, I have a right to alcohol. I have a right to cigarettes. I have a right to my cable TV. So, of course, I'm not going to get rid of any of that stuff. And I'm still hungry, so you need to feed me too. That's not a thankful heart. And then you're going to go ahead and be bitter and curse me out if I don't do something for you. The humble heart, they're not going to have that type of an attitude. And look, I get people, people have needs sometime and they're legitimate needs and they fall on hard times and I am completely sympathetic for that and I will help people out in those situations. But what people need to understand is that you need to prioritize in your life. And I'm going to preach a whole sermon about that on managing your money and what you really should come to expect. Going back a little bit to what I mentioned earlier, you know, it's easy to be thankful when things are going well in your life. And that's the truth. And it may feel like a bitter pill to swallow trying to be thankful when things aren't going that well. And you can look around and you see so many other people doing much better off than you. Now, that is a wicked heart. You know, you should, that's, that's covetousness. You shouldn't be looking at other people. I could understand the difficulty in it. But look, if you're going to want to do what's right, you not need to worry about what other people are doing and what other people have. You need to worry about yourself and what God has given you and focus on that. Focus on the good that God has done in your life because I guarantee you, He's done you good. And you need to identify that and recognize that. And honestly, if you can have that type of an attitude, that thankful attitude, that will make you more joyful of a person anyways. The person who focuses on what they don't have is going to be miserable. And you're always going to be miserable. When you focus on the, on the problems and the issues and that's all you ever think about is what's wrong and what we don't have and this is broken and that's broken and we don't have this and we don't have that and I want to go here and I want to do this and I don't have any of these things, it's going to make you miserable. Your life is not going to be happy at all. But if you could take stock of everything that you have and you just look around, even if, no matter how little it is, 
and just be like, hey, praise the Lord. Praise God for giving me this. Praise God for giving me my children. Praise God for giving me my spouse. Praise God for, for all of the things that we have that are just we take for granted on a daily basis. You can always have things worse and praise the Lord for where you're at. James chapter 1, look at verse number 17. I had you turn to James 1. Verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God, ultimately, we need when we go to Thanksgiving tomorrow, all thanks needs to be given to God. Now, I'm not saying no one else can receive thanks. We need to be, give, be thankful to other people when they help us out and do things for us. But at the end of the day, every good gift comes from God. It comes from the Lord. He's the one who is the giver of, of every good gift and every perfect gift, according to James chapter 1 here. He's the one that makes it responsible. Hey, God's the one that, that has blessed people who have more money to be able to give you gifts that are maybe really nice gifts. You say, well, how did God give me it? Because God blessed that person in order to give you that. So don't forget to be thankful unto God for everything that you receive. And you know, just as a side note, this sermon really isn't about tithing at all, but one of the things that, that we do, you know, I believe that, that the tithe is scriptural. I'm not going to go into all the verses about that, that we should be giving 10% of our increase unto the Lord. And because it's our increase, what we do personally as a family and what, and what I believe is the right thing to do is when we receive gifts or people increase us by, by giving us things, you know, that we didn't have before, hey, we've been blessed and we are increased. The Bible says that every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. God, we, we recognize the fact that God has given us that gift. So we tithe on those things also. Now, the reason why I'm bringing that up, though, is because when, when, you, when you start doing that, it makes you pay attention to everything you have truly received. Now, prior to me implementing this in my life, there were so many things that, that have gone away where I wasn't thankful for them because I didn't even take the time to recognize the fact that, that, hey, I've really been given a lot. And if you start to do this, let's say you don't even tithe on them, but let's say every week, pretend you're going to tithe on things that you receive and just start writing down all the things that people give you, whether it be someone buying you lunch or you know, any gifts that you might receive, anyone in your family or friends or someone gives you something. Start taking note of those things. Oftentimes, you'll find that, that you take them for granted, you kind of forget about it. And it's when you forget about it when you can tend to be ungrateful and unthankful and you don't really realize how much you truly are being blessed. I know when we do this, I try to think every time I get paid and I, I'm working out my tithe check, I start thinking like, man, you know, God, there have been times where I could just say like, God is truly blessing us. I mean, we, are, we have received so much. So many people have helped us out. So many people have done so many nice things for us, whether it be a piece of furniture here or, or a gift for the kids there or buying clothing, whatever it may be. You know, it, it's amazing when you sit down and take the time to set aside and just think about all of those things that you've gotten. It truly does help your attitude. It helps you to be more joyful. And it helps you to recognize and give thanks unto God where every good gift and every perfect gift is from. Turn, if you would, to Psalm 147. Maybe you're in a position where you're having a hard time figuring out. You say, well, no one really does anything for me. And I'm not in a very good situation. And you have a hard time figuring out what to be thankful for. Well, the Bible gives us lots of things to be thankful for. And there are lots of things to be thankful for anyways. But we're going to read this psalm. Psalm 147 is excellent. There's so many things in here to praise God for and to be thankful for. Over and over, you know, one of the most common verses, I think, as far as being thankful, the Bible says... Um, Give thanks unto the Lord, for His mercy endureth forever. That phrase, and a similar phrase is with, with just maybe one or two words slightly different. Give thanks unto the Lord, for His mercy endureth forever. Hey, that's something that we ought to be thankful for all the time. God's mercy. God's mercy. 
We sin probably every single day. When, the more you start reading the Bible, the more you're going to understand how far short you actually fall of God's holy standards. Because God has a high standard set. And when you start to understand that, you'll start to understand more and more and more God's mercy. His abundance of mercy upon us and, and all the bad things that don't happen to us that we actually deserve to have happen to us where God has forgiven us and showed mercy and extended mercy unto us. That alone is sufficient to, to deserve an enormous amount of thanksgiving unto God. But let's read Psalm 147. Starting in verse number 1, the Bible reads, Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart, and bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praises upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him in those that hope in his mercy. We saw up there in verse 8, it says, He covereth the heaven with clouds. He prepareth rain for the earth and maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. These are things that you probably never think about. You probably never think about those things to be thankful for. But you know what? The food that you eat you ought to be thankful for these things. You ought to be thankful for the God of heaven that causes it to rain on this earth and that causes the, the grass and the herbs and the crops and, and everything to yield their increase. These things happen on a daily basis. The weather and the weather patterns, hey, it's controlled by the Lord. Now I know that man is trying to take God's place and, and use things like harp and geoengineering to try to control the climate of the earth, but the Bible explains here that God is the one that takes care of this stuff for us. God is the one that's going to provide uh, the rain in times of harvest, and, and He's the one that we need to give thanks to for the food that we have. You say, oh yeah, but I worked, hard for I worked hard for this food. Why do I have to give thanks to God? Because God's the one that caused it to grow to begin with. That's why. It doesn't matter how much money you have, you would have nothing if it weren't for God. You can try to think that you deserve it so much, but ultimately, you don't. Ultimately, the credit and the glory goes unto God, and the thanksgiving goes unto God. Let's keep reading here, verse number 12. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion. For he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children within thee. Now, of course, he's talking about Jerusalem, but what's he talking about? Why is he saying for them to praise God? Because he's strengthened the bars of thee. He's kept them safe. That's what he's talking about. He has kept them safe from evil and from harm and from intruders. And can't we say the same thing in, in America today? Hey, praise the Lord for keeping us safe for keeping us from, from invaders and from enemies and from people coming in to take our land and to kill us and murder us. Hey, praise the Lord for that, that He's given us a safe place for our children to grow up. Verse 14, He maketh peace in thy borders and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. Again, referring to the food and the peace that we have. Look, these are things that can all be applied to us today to be thankful about, but they're probably things that you never think about. You just probably think, well, of course we don't have people invading us. Of course we don't. That's ridiculous. Why would there be? Hey, be thankful for the peace that you have. That could change at any time. Believe me. That can change. It probably will change relatively soon. Now, I don't buy in necessarily to all the fear that the media tries to instill in people. But at the same time, what I, am, what, I am, what I do know is that this society that we live in, this culture, is wicked as hell. 
And I know that God's judgment is going to come upon this society. And I know that he usually does that in the form of invading armies. So I am not worried about, about the fear propaganda that's being pushed by the mainstream media. But I do know for a fact that God will judge this nation. And we need to thank the Lord every single day that we still have peace. And that it's still a safe place for our children to grow up. Verse number 16 says, um, verse 15, He sendeth forth His commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth His ice like morsels. Who can stand before His cold? You say, why is it good to get snow and ice? Well, it's good because in the summertime that melts. And that provides a lot of of, of moisture and, and, and um, water for, for areas that need that water. And um, anyways, keep reading here. Verse number 18, He sendeth out His word and melteth them. He causeth His wind to blow and the waters flow. He showeth His word unto Jacob, His statutes and His judgments unto Israel. Another reason to be thankful, we have the word of God in, to in total today. We have it easily available at our fingertips now, pure wisdom and knowledge and truth right at our hands. Easily available. Any store. Look, you can get these things for free. You can come to our church and get them for free. It's so readily available. All of the answers you could possibly be looking for in this lifetime in one book that I'm holding in my hand is readily available. Praise God. Praise the Lord for that, for giving us His truth and His wisdom in a way that we can understand and He can speak to us. And it's so readily available, but so many people take it for granted. How many Bibles are sitting on bookshelves right now in homes just collecting dust? No appreciation for the gifts and for what's available. And those same people that don't want to pick up God's Word and actually gain wisdom and instruction are the same ones oftentimes that are going to God all the time, every week, and problems and, and all this stuff. And God's probably up there sitting and going, look, I gave you my Word. It's sitting on your shelf. Why don't you open up and read it? That'll help you with your problems. We have His Word. He gives us his statutes and his judgments. Verse 20, he hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. So many reasons to be thankful. Now since we have so many reasons to be thankful, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch gears a little bit in the sermon tonight because I think this is extremely interesting and it's good for you to know. We're going we're gonna to cover a, just a completely separate um, Portion, I, I want to explain to you something here that one very good way to be thankful unto God as you think about, well, you know, besides just praying to God and kind of just saying, you know, thank you, Lord. What I found over and over again in the Bible, and that's why we just read Psalm 147 about praising God. That's a song. God loves to be praised and to receive his thanksgiving in songs. And I believe, personally, that, that singing songs and psalms and hymns and spiritual songs unto the Lord is something that ought to be a part of every Christian's life. You say, well, I don't sing very well. I don't care. I think it's something that, that God wants to hear from you. He wants to hear those thanks. You, you know, God has given you the voice that you have. And I believe it's something that's only going to help you in your, in your spiritual walk with God. I think it's something that will help to bring you joy, especially when you're giving thanks unto God and you're recognizing all these things that God has given us and you're singing unto the Lord. It will help you. But this is important, not just for those reasons, but the Bible, you know, in um, just a little bit of history, back when, um, you know, in Moses' day, they, had the, they created the tabernacle, Right? And they would, they would wander around, they would live in tents, and the house of God would, was considered in the tabernacle, and they would move around, and the Levites were given the job of setting up and taking down and, and keeping track of all of the, the things inside of the tabernacle. Well, when King David came into power, he was like, he wanted, it came into his heart that he wanted to build a house unto the Lord. He wanted to build a temple. God allowed this to happen, but not in his days. It could be in the days of Solomon. 
But because they were stationary in one place and the tabernacle is going to be done away with and they're going to have this great temple, all those jobs that the Levites had, legitimate jobs of, of setting up and taking down and taking care of all those things, a lot of that stuff kind of went away. So what David replaced those jobs with was for certain of the Levites to be song leaders and to play musical instruments. David's the one that kind of introduced all of this music and song playing into worshiping the Lord. And it was a great thing. And, and, and um, it definitely was blessed by God and um, was ordained by God that they would be part of the service. Now, these were important jobs that he had. And, and, and I want to point this out to you. I want, I'm going to have you turn to... Um, where may I have you turn? Turn to Nehemiah chapter 12. But I'm going to read for you from 1 uh, Chronicles chapter 9, verse 33. The Bible reads, And these are the singers, chief of the fathers of the Levites, who remaining in the chambers were free, for they were employed in that work day and night. So it's talking about the singers. And their employment, their job was employed day and night was being a singer for the Lord. And it says that they were chief of the fathers of the Levites. They were, they were well respected. They were at the top. They were in positions of power. They were at the heads of households. And they were the singers. The, you know, I'm pointing it out because it's not just some lowly job that they had, that this was actually an important thing. It was a big deal that, that the chief of the fathers of the Levites were appointed to be singers and that they did this business day and night. It was, a, it was an important thing. It's not something they just did, oh, as a hobby or recreation. That was their full-time job, day and night. All throughout the Bible, we're, I'm just going to read some, some verses out of the Psalms for you. Song is used to give thanksgiving unto God. Psalm 69, verse 30 and 31 read, I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify Him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bullock that hath horns and hoofs. So that big sacrifice that you're thinking about giving unto God, you know, it's talking about a bullock or an ox that are, that are these big animals to give that would be like, you know, worth a lot of money. Let's say that big offering that maybe you're going to put in the offering plate and it's a big sacrifice for you to part with that money to give unto God for the use of the Lord. You know what it says here? It says that the praise uh, and the song with thanksgiving, he's going to be, he's going to like that more. He says that's better. That's better than the, than the big, the big sacrifice financially that you're going to make unto the Lord. You opening your mouth and singing praises and songs of thanksgiving unto God. God loves to hear that. Psalm 95, verse 1. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before His presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto Him with psalms. Again, we see you know, people coming before God with thanksgiving, singing songs of thanksgiving. Psalm 100. Verse 4 and 5, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I don't know about you, but tomorrow on Thanksgiving Day, what me and my family are going to do, we're going to sing songs of praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord to show our thankfulness unto him. And I think that's a good, if, if you know, for those of you who like doing, starting different traditions, maybe this hasn't been part of your tradition in the past for Thanksgiving, but what I like doing, you know, for example, on Christmas, we like reading, the, you know, before we, before we open any presents, or before we do anything else, we have a tradition in my house where we read the Bible and we, we read, you know, a passage that has to do with the birth of Christ. That has to do with that story. And I explain that story to my children every year. And we read that passage. And we set aside everything else that we do for the day. Yes, it's a busy day. Yes, we get to spend time with family. And, and the kids are excited about presents and everything. But the first thing that we do is we take the time to honor and recognize the whole point of the day to begin with. And you know what? That's, that's going to be, and we haven't done this necessarily as much with Thanksgiving. 
But with, with everything that the Bible talks about and giving thanks unto God, our tradition is going to be to sing unto the Lord and to honor Him and to, and to pray unto God and to give Him thanks for all that we have is, is our family tradition for thanksgiving also because that's what the day ought to be about ultimately is giving thanks unto God. Everything else that we're thankful for and the people we're thankful for comes secondary to being thankful unto the Lord. Did I have you turn to Nehemiah chapter 12? I want you to see this, Nehemiah chapter 12, verse number 8, because here we're going to see about a man named Madaniah. Madaniah was of the lineage of Asaph, and his specific job was over the thanksgiving. Nehemiah chapter 12, verse number 8. The Bible reads, Moreover, the Levites, Jeshua, Binuai, Cadmiel, Sherebiah, Judah, and Madaniah, which was over the thanksgiving, he and his brethren. Now, Asaph, the reason why I said he's of the lineage of Asaph, Asaph, of course, was a psalmist. He was one of the, one of the, the he was involved in the, in the music, musical service of the Lord. So this is a Levite, Madaniah, that was in that same service of the Lord over the music, and his job specifically was over the thanksgiving, he and his brethren. And then in uh, chapter 11, I'll just read from verse 17. We're going to continue in chapter 12. Nehemiah eleven seventeen 17 says, And Madaniah, the son of Micah, the son of Zabdi, the son of Asaph, was the principal to begin the thanksgiving in prayer. The way that he started off their thanksgiving was with prayer unto God. And I believe that that's the way that we ought to start off our Thanksgiving day. Now, I realize, look, it's a little bit different. We have a Thanksgiving day. This is talking about him performing the music of Thanksgiving unto the Lord. But he started that off with prayer. And you know what? We ought to start off our Thanksgiving day with prayer unto God and keeping him at the, focus, the focal point of our thanks. But let's keep reading in Nehemiah chapter 12. Look at verse number 31. Verse number 31 says, Then I brought up the princes of Judah upon the wall and appointed two great companies of them that gave thanks, whereof one went on the right hand upon the wall toward the dung gate. And after them went Hoshiah and half of the princes of Judah and Azariah, Ezra and Meshullam, Judah and Benjamin and Shemaiah and Jeremiah, and certain of the priests' sons with trumpets, Namely, Zechariah, the son of Jonathan, the son of Shemaiah, the son of Madaniah, the son of Micaiah, the son of Zachar, the son of Asaph, and his brethren, Shemaiah and Azareel, Malalai, Galalai, Maai, Nathaniel, and Judah, Hanani, with the musical instruments of David, the man of God, and Ezra the scribe before them. Now, I want to point out here, we're going to read a little bit further, but look at the big production that they're making about this. This is all for the thanksgiving. This is all for giving thanks unto the Lord in song. And they have all of these people with these instruments and the trumpets and the singers and they're singing praises unto the Lord and they're making a big deal out of it because it is a big deal. Because all praise and honor and glory belongs unto the Lord and you're making a glorious event out of this and really making a big deal, putting a lot of effort into it. It's not half-hearted. They're putting all of their heart into this and all of their strength and all of their might into praising God. Because he is worthy, because his mercy endureth forever. Let's keep reading, verse 37. And at the fountain gate, which was over against them, they went up by the stairs of the city of David, at the going up of the wall above the house of David, even unto the water gate eastward. And the other company of them that gave thanks went over against them. Two companies of people, right, that were giving thanks. It says, and the other company of them that gave thanks went over against them, and I after them, and the half of the people upon the wall from beyond the tower of the furnace, furnaces, even unto the broad wall. And from above the gate of Ephraim, and above the old gate, and above the fish gate, and the tower of Hananiel, and the tower of Mia, even unto the sheep gate, and they stood still in the prison gate. So stood the two companies of them that gave thanks in the house of God, and I and the half of, of the rulers with me, and priests, and the priests, Eliakim, Maasiah, Miniamin, and Maiachiah, Eliowenai, Zechariah, and Hananiah, 
with trumpets. And Maasiah and Shemaiah and Eleazar and Uzzai and Jehohanan and Malchijah and Elam and Ezer, and the singers sang loud with Jezrahiah their overseer. I love that. It says, look, it doesn't just say, and the singers sang. You know, they mention all the, the trumpets and the priests were there, and these companies of Levites were there, and they have all their instruments. And what did the singers do? And the singers sang out loud. Hey, when you come, this is in the house of the Lord, when you come to church, sing these songs out loud. That's the whole point. It's the purpose. Don't, don't sing real quiet with your voice real slow and soft and hoping nobody will hear you. You're not singing for other people. When you, can, you hear that? When you come into church and you sing praises, don't worry what other people are going to think about your singing because you're not singing for them. You're not singing to impress the other people in church. And you're singing, you ought not to care what other people think about you. And you know what? You ought not to care about how someone else sounds. Let's throw that out there too. You ought not to be thinking, oh man, this person's a terrible singer. Look, they're singing unto the Lord. Praise God. Praise God that they are willing to offer up their sacrifice of praise unto God. I love it when people sing out loud. I think we need to have more of it. Because you know what? The more people that start to sing out loud, the more other people will sing out loud. It, it's kind of infectious. It kind of catches on. When you, have, when you have one person singing out loud, it's not necessarily going to make everyone else sing out loud. Other people might just be thinking wrongfully that, oh man, why is that guy singing out loud? Hey, look, but you start having one or two or three other people joining in, pretty soon everybody's going to be singing out loud. You don't sing for the benefit of the other people. We sing to God because we love Him and He is worthy of our praise and He is worthy of, our th of the thanksgiving that we can offer up to Him. Sing out unto God when you sing these songs. Sing out loud. Verse 43, Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. This is a great day of joy. Now, of course, this is, this is at the time when they rebuilt the temple and everything's going great. And they, you know, they had all these instruments. They had this great, this great uh, party, basically. But I'll tell you what, singing these songs, and, and this, is, this is honest for me. I, I will be 100% honest with you today. I was not in the best of moods before church started. It's just one of those days. But singing these songs and singing these songs out loud, I'll tell you what, it'll, it'll, it'll give you joy. And I am thankful for these hymns that we sing and for praying and for, and for just being in the house of God and being around other believers. It will help you to experience that joy. And we see these people had great joy and they rejoiced greatly. Verse 44, And at that time were some appointed over the chambers for the treasures, for the offerings, for the first fruits, and for the tithes to gather into them out of the fields of the cities the portions of the law for the priests and Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priests and for the Levites that waited. And both the singers and the porters kept the ward of their God and the ward of the purification according to the commandment of David and of Solomon his son. For in the days of David and Asaph of old, there were chief of the singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel and the days of Nehemiah gave the portions of the singers and the porters every day his portion, and they sanctified holy things unto the Levites, and the Levites sanctified them unto the children of Aaron. Singing songs, singing songs of, of praise and thanksgiving unto the Lord. Hey, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. It's easy to get caught up in the hustle and the bustle of things. Don't let this world and don't let your, your busyness distract you from praising God and from thanking God for everything. For, for so many people now, it seems like even Thanksgiving is being corrupted. You know, it used to, it used to just be like many other things, a, a, a real wholesome holiday. I mean, how can you screw up Thanksgiving? You know, they've already screwed up Christmas by, by introducing sa Satan Claus. And they've already, you know, screwed up Easter with the Easter Bunny and all that, and all that nonsense. 
But Thanksgiving is something, you know, it's pretty hard to screw up. But what are they screwing it up with now? Shopping. Shopping. People are more focused on their covetous hearts and on spending money and on buying material things than they are just being happy for what they have. And just, and just being thankful and being not covetous and being content with what they have instead of just thinking, oh man, what am I going to buy tomorrow? What am I going to buy tonight? You know, and these people are going to these stores. Look, don't go shopping on Thanksgiving. The reason why any stores are even opening is because you're going to go and go shopping. If nobody went out shopping into these businesses, they wouldn't be open. They're not going to keep their lights on for nobody to come and shop. So the people who are responsible, don't blame the business. Blame yourself for going out and doing these things. You know, people that work at these places, they have families too. There ought to at least be one day where everybody could just enjoy their family and relax and rest. Don't be so caught up in this covetous society and, and, and be brainwashed into thinking that you need all these things. You need this big TV. You need this smartphone. You need... These electronics, you need to spend $700 and $1,000 on all this stuff. No, what you need is to pay your bills and to, and to eat some food. That's what you need. You need to work. You don't need all these gadgets and toys and all the things that they want to sell you on Black Friday and Cyber Monday and every other day in between and, and Thanksgiving Day and, and everything else. Don't get distracted with that nonsense. Take some time to reflect. So take some time to just forget all that stuff. You don't need any of it. If, any, if there's ever, it, it, it's ironic the way that they put these days together with the world because Thanksgiving of, of all days should be a day where you're not thinking anything about needing more stuff because you've been so thankful for what you already have. Good Friday should be a failure. It should be a failure. Because people should be thinking, I don't need that. I'm, uh, God's blessed me tremendously. I don't need any of that stuff. But it's not. Why? Because people are ungrateful and unthankful. They go through the motions of thanksgiving and, and oftentimes forget what it's all about to begin with. And it's just become another thing that you do, some, some tradition. You don't know what it's all about. and You just get stressed out about making food and and. and than what you're going to shop for the next day. Let's have a humble heart. Let's have a thankful heart. And um, I challenge you, you should you know, sing, sing a song unto God tomorrow. Praise the Lord with thanksgiving. Start that as a, as a tradition in your house. I guarantee it will bring you joy. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much. We truly thank you so much, dear God, for all that you do. I thank you for leading me to start this church, dear God. I thank you for everybody that's here tonight. I thank you for everyone that's a member of this church that comes to this church faithfully, dear Lord. Thank you most of all for our salvation, for, for loving us, for dying for us, dear Lord, for giving us of these, these wonderful gifts that we don't deserve. And Lord, everything that you give us, we are undeserving of. And we thank you for it, Lord. We thank you Thank you, thank you so much, dear God. You truly are amazing. We pray that you would please just uh, help us all as we go our separate ways tonight to keep you in mind and, and to truly be thankful for what you get to recognize what you've done for us. All of the things, big and little, that you've done for us. Help us to just to sit back and contemplate on those things so that we can humble ourselves and just give honor and glory unto your name. It's in Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen.